Hey, what's up guys? It's Austin and we have another sweet video for you tonight. We just got a pretty cool pickup, an original Xbox. It was given to us by a fan of the show and we're excited to use it. So what better to test it with than probably the all-time best Xbox, original Xbox game, which is Halo. So let's give this bad boy a shot. You have to excuse our wire mess. Uh, capturing from analog video source is a friggin' nightmare and it results in a rat's nest. Ooh. I think the original Xbox logo was pretty cool. Well, good thing is we already knew that. Uh, we just want a little bit of dramatic build up. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna try to fix this. Uh, we actually have a new laser on order for this thing, but I ran across a hack on the internet that the laser in this thing has a potentiometer built into it, which is pretty much a manipulatable, manipulatable? Don't think that's a word. A resistor you can manipulate. So you can turn it up or down so you can select how much juice is going through it. And this laser has one on it for whatever reason. So apparently you can meter this thing and crank it up to where it sends more juice to it and it'll actually make the disc read better by amplifying how much uh, power the laser is getting. So let's give this a try and see if it works. If not, we've got the part on order. So huh, what the heck, let's do it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn over your Xbox. And the first screws we're going to have to remove are under the rubber feet that are on the corners. And they're actually closest to the corner, so you shouldn't have to peel the rubber feet all the way up. This takes a number 20 Torx bit. And then underneath this sticker, you'll also find a screw. And then under the sticker there, there's another screw. So in total, there are six screws on the bottom. All right, so now we have all of our screws out. We used a Torx bit, which was T20, which I'm pretty sure that's right, but uh, full disclosure, me and Chris are very unorganized when it comes to tools, so you have to bear, bear with us there. I'm pretty sure T20's right, so try that. If not, you're on your own. So after you get all those screws out, you have to flip the Xbox over. I don't know if, I'm just gonna take this out. Anyway, then you just lift and then the top cover comes off. All right, so now that the top cover is off, first thing you need to do is there's like this shielding here. You sh should be able to see it on both cameras. It's like a silver piece of metal. You just gently bend it back towards you. Uh, then with a Phillips screwdriver, there are two Phillips screws. Can you see this, Chris? And those have to come out. Another full disclosure moment. Anytime you're doing a video like this, it is so hard to keep your head out of the friggin' camera. It's ridiculous. So, then, whoop, losing screws. This tray just kind of lifts out. You might have to like, do like I did and kind of put a screwdriver under the edge here and gently. Just remember, anytime you're messing with electronics, guys, gently. So, this is off now. You see our game still in here, which that doesn't really matter. Lifts right out. All right, so. So what we're getting at <clears throat> is this bad boy right here. This is what's causing us all this fuss. While we're in here, 
I'm gonna try to clean this thing a little bit because it's, I mean, it's it's old. It's been sitting in somebody's basement for God knows how long, and it's just dirty. A lot of times you can actually come in and where this laser uh, lens is, you can take a Q-tip with like a high proof rubbing alcohol and just clean it and it can make it work for a while. But that's how you could tell I've taken this thing apart before I knew, I knew how to take it apart to this degree was I've already done that, I cleaned it. It worked one time, I put a game in, it worked. I was like, freak yeah, this works. Put another game in, didn't work, killed my dreams. So that's where we're at right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take one quick cut and we're gonna come back. All right guys, so the next thing you need to do is there are two screws right in the front of the DVD drive here and they're in what looks like two little gray semicircles down here, you'll see them. And it takes a Torx 9 or T9. I know that's right because it's labeled on the side of the screwdriver. This would be a time whenever it would be nice to have a magnetic screwdriver, but we're not that high budget yet. So now what you need to do is there's clips in the back here. So you kind of have to pull over on these pieces of plastic up here and then it'll kind of just pop out. So that side's out. So now I need to pull on this side. And this is a little bit like violent. Probably could have done this first, but you know, do what it, however you want. Take the IDE cable off the back of the hard drive or the disk drive and then the power. Then there's a metal shield on the front of the disk drive. You take it out and then your disk drive is free. So now we're gonna set the Xbox. We're gonna set the Xbox out of the way. And so now we're left with this. And so now what we're gonna work on doing is taking the tray out and getting to the actual laser itself. All right, so now you've got two more torque screws at the back. I don't know if they're T9 or not, it feels a little bit loose, but it, it, it will take them out. So it's gonna take those out. It's gonna remove this metal shield off the bottom. I'm gonna look it up, but the original Xbox couldn't have been that far off from the inception of SATA. Kinda, kinda weird that they have ID, it's IDE. I, or maybe I'm just wrong, maybe it's a lot older than I think it is. All these shields and stuff are just in the most terrible places that I have to use my body to gain leverage. Alright. Alright, so that's off now. Sorry from the beginning. Alright, so now what you gotta do is there's like this white plastic piece here and you just kind of push down on it. And then it raises up like the laser assembly and it kind of pushes the tray out a little bit. And then once it's out just a hair, you can pull it on the rest of the way out. And now we have full access to our laser. And that's what we need to mess with. So now what we need to do is freaking, hey, it's dirty in there. Okay, so it looks like we need to take these Phillips screws out. Uh, that should be all that's holding these rods in and then we should be able to take the whole thing out and slide it out. So uh, Let me find my Phillips screwdriver, which is here. We're gonna take Be careful because you kind of have to put some pressure on them, which I once again, I probably just don't have the right size Phillips head in my Okay and guys, it, I know this seems kind of complicated, but it's it's really not that bad. That's one thing that has always been taken out of my vocabulary is, you know, something's too difficult. Because you know what? The worst thing that can happen is if you're trying to fix something this old that's already broken, nothing. It's already broken. The worst thing you can do is mess it up a little bit worse. And you know what? If it's already broken, what's that really matter, right? So now we've got our, we'll call these the guide rods because it's what the uh, laser assembly moves on. And then you need to take this 
ribbon cable out. Oh, and it just comes out and it goes back in that same hole that it came in. So there's our laser assembly. This is what uh, we ordered more or less off of the internet to replace this with. So like I said, worst case scenario with this is we F this one up real good and we just throw a new one in. So about it. this here is that potentiometer, that screw that looks like a little bit pink. What I'm doing now is I have this Q-tip that has a very, 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 very small amount of acetone. But if you have any other like mild solvent, that should work. It's got glue on it. So what you want to do is you want to take it and rub it just on that one piece. What we're trying to do is, you can see the pink on my Q-tip, is we're trying to remove that little bit of glue that's holding it still. So I'm going back and forth, but stupid fuzz. I'm going back and forth between my acetone and my dry Q-tip, so I'm not getting too much acetone on it. What you want to do is there's two exposed pieces of metal on either side of this screw, and you want to touch them with the multimeter. This thing is really, I don't have a good clamp to hold it with, so it's hard to get a good reading on this on camera. So right now it's reading two and that's probably because I've been sitting here messing with it seeing which way it needs to turn and stuff so we want it to be at about 3.7 so we're gonna turn it up uh, see what that looks like so we're on three now so um, I'm probably actually just gonna go ahead and leave it at three. I don't think my meter will do points. So I'd rather be lower than higher because lower means less resistance, so more current. So that's what I'm gonna leave it as three. Okay, so while we have this apart, we're gonna go ahead and clean this once again. I'm using, all we have here is 70%. You probably wanna use a little bit higher than 70%. And all that does is it makes it evaporate faster. Um, the higher proof it is, the, higher it, the faster it evaporates. So I'm just gonna, and you can see the laser moving around a little bit, that's okay. We're just gonna scrubby scrub on this lens just a little bit. And then I'm gonna flip it over too, and then there's this prism on the bottom. We're gonna clean it too, and this one's really, really nasty, dirty. So I'm gonna hit it a little bit. And you don't want it too wet, so you can use your dry end a little bit if you need to. But honestly, it's the best just to let it air dry. So I hit that a good little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out the whole thing though because any excess dust is gonna just fall right back on that lens. So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna give everything a good little cleaning. So that's pretty much it for the cleaning. And uh, hopefully after this next go around it'll work we'll have to see all right guys so we went ahead and put everything back together just because we took it apart if you just reverse it it puts it back together it just makes the video too long so we're gonna give this a try now and see if our little hack worked Moment of truth. The suspense is killing me. And also lack of sleep. That's killing me too. So, one thing I've noticed so far is our Xbox ring is solid instead of blinking. So, I think it's a good sign. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. This son of a gun's working. Hell yeah. Excuse the audio, that probably has something to do with the crappy RCA cables we're using. Freak yeah, dude, that's, that's awesome. So, I'm excited. I know Chris is excited. So, I mean, it was a little bit annoying taking the thing apart. 
We'll probably go ahead and change out that reed head anyway because we already ordered a new one. But if one of you guys has an Xbox out there that's been sitting at your house and you're it's done that, I know that the first Xbox I had did this before I ended up breaking it, trying to soft mod it whenever I was like 15. But it kind of stopped working like that. And now, I mean, I wish I would have just kept it. I could have went back and fixed it. So it's really not that hard. Just give it some time. It just like anything, if you can, you know, watch this video and go along with it, you can do it. I mean, you could probably learn how to do brain surgery on YouTube now. So just pay attention to what we did and try it for yourself. So stick with us, check it. We're gonna, we got a lot of cool videos coming up. I'm really excited about reviewing some of these uh, original Xbox games. Big shout out to Asa. Uh, he gave us this Xbox. Didn't tell us it had the disc read error. But we fixed it, so and it gave us another video. So we really appreciate it, Asa. And uh, come back and check out our social media pages and just continue to watch our channel. We'll see you guys next time.